like in a, for the ones who don't know me yet, I am Jihan Shahla, in charge of managing Kut Cluster at Belitech. We have with us about uh, 20 participants now. Uh, so, uh, if you, uh, as you have noticed, everyone has his or her mic on mute. Only the presenter will be talking and sharing his or her screen. The presentations will be registered and shared with you later on. We will post them on YouTube as well. Uh, also, we are going live on Facebook. So, first, thank you all for joining this webinar. This is, this is the third of a series of monthly webinars organized by Good Cluster, hosting different speakers and covering various topics related to innovation in the agri-food sector. I really hope that the next one will be done in a physical place and we will be all able to gather and connect again very soon, inshallah. <clears throat> As you may know, CUT is Lebanon's first agri-food innovation cluster initiated by Veritech with the support of the Dutch Embassy. CUT includes now more than 40 members of innovative SMEs and large companies working all together to accelerate their innovations. Uh, if you are not part of CUT yet and you, would and you would like to join us, so I invite you to, to, uh, to Check our website, kud.org, to learn more about our activities, about our members, our services, and what we are doing. Of course, you can also join us uh, and follow us on our LinkedIn page. So for this webinar, we have the pleasure to host our three expert speakers. We have with us Dr. Mohab Anis, professor at the American University of Cairo and founder and CEO of Innovity. Dr. Anis will take us through the principles of innovations in the pandemic era. Then we will host uh, Mr. Patrick Atme, who is the Job Creation Operations Manager at the Economic and Social Fund for Development, ESFG. Uh, Patrick will uh, tell us more about the funding opportunities that they are provided by ESFT. Uh, last but not least, we will have Ms. Zina Dakash, who is a dear person to my heart for all the great work she does. Zena has an MA in clinical psychology, registered drama therapist and a board certified trainer. And she is the founder of Catharsis, the Lebanese Center for Drama Therapy. Uh, Zena, as she said, she will take us through the a hero's journey to tell us about resilience in time of crisis. So, uh, as usual, we, we will take your questions on Slido. So, please, if you can go on your device, devices on slido.com and you can insert the code 88879. So I'll put it on the chatting box. So it's slido.com. And you put the code 88879. So here on this platform, you can pose all your questions and uh, uh, we will make sure that all your questions will be answered at the end of this webinar by our uh, experts and speakers. So now we will leave the floor to Dr. Wahab, uh, who is a professor at the American University of Cairo, entrepreneur, strategist and mentor who possesses a wealth of technical and industrial experience. So as I said uh, earlier, Mohab is also the founder of and CEO of Innovity. At Innovity, he leads various engagements and consults businesses and government on innovation practices, strategy and management of technology. Mohab has also worked heavily with the government and donor agencies on strategy and policy that fosters innovation. So Dr. Mohab, welcome and the floor is yours. 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jihan, for the uh, introduction. Uh, let me just share my screen and make sure that uh, you can all see it and that my voice is uh, heard. Can you see my screen and can you hear me well? Perfectly. Excellent, excellent. So uh, it's lovely to have, uh, to get this opportunity to, uh, to be part of this uh, uh, nice webinar uh, by, uh, by Kut. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a little bit about something that I've been, I've been doing over the past three months, which is being part of a, a global think tank to identify the kind of directions that businesses need to uh, work on, particularly during the area, era of uh, the pandemic, but more importantly, post the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, so just a quick, uh, just a quick uh, overview. Uh, so we, uh, Innovity has actually been founded, it's an innovation management consultancy that we've been in business for the past uh, 10 or 11 years now. And we, again, we do a lot of work with businesses, uh, whether they are large businesses, uh, medium businesses in size, small businesses, even startups, uh, to provide them with, uh, again, the skills and the knowledge and to help them with how to can, they can grow their business around different innovation uh, principles. So that's really what we do for a living and, and better tech in particular has been one of our very good partners over the past few years that we've been done, done a, a, quite a few of work uh, with them. So as you probably uh, know that this is uh, called the uh, COVID-19 curve. I'm sure that all of you uh, have seen this curve before and that a lot of the news uh, that is out there has been always been talking about, and uh, even the authorities in government, they've been always, always saying, we need to flatten the curve. We need to flatten the curve so that we're able to allow the healthcare system to have the sufficient capacity and the number of beds to uh, support the patients, the COVID-19 patients. So one of the ways that, or one of the most important ways to actually flatten this curve was to uh, promote the concept of social distancing, right? So we have to, we don't, we're not able to see each other again. Uh, we have to do a lot of things online. We have to do a lot of things virtually. Even if we see each other, we have to be at least, uh, you know, two meters away from each other. So it has been a, it has not been a, a very uh, socializable uh, experience to say the least. But it, it also has a very strong uh, impact on businesses, unfortunately. Uh, because of the shutdown, uh, governments have slowed down a lot in terms of the kind of operations and the services that they can introduce. We, we all have been hearing about the corporations and the institutions, small businesses that have closed or ha have been actually, some of them actually have gone uh, bankrupt. So. A lot of uh, suffering, I would say, from an economical point of view has been, has been happening. So it is extremely important for us to get back to business as soon as possible for the purpose of decreasing the fear of people, right? And to increase the trust of people to actually uh, go back to businesses, for customers to go back to enter restaurants, for people to start going back to cinemas. So we need to do this in a very, very intelligent uh, way. Uh, you can hear a lot, you can hear a lot from people about the kind of fears that they are having right now while these businesses are starting to, to open. You will hear someone who would be saying, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't want to be touching any kind of surface that has been touched by some other person. That's, that's, we, all, we always hear that statement. We always also hear that, you know, I don't want this person to help me you know, uh, 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 fix or, or develop something or to uh, assemble something for me at home. I want to do it myself. Let me do it on my own. We also hear about, you know, that I really want to be, I, wa I really want to travel to, uh, let's say, a country like Italy, but I really do, I don't want to be there because of the situation over there. So people are really, really interested in, you know, doing a lot of these virtual uh, things. <clears throat> we also hear people saying, you know, Am I really sure that this desk is very, very clean? Am I really, really sure that this package that I bought from the supermarket is very clean? We hear this a lot. Also, it's very, sometimes we hear people, you know, when they go to banks, when they go to uh, uh, supermarkets, that they want to make sure that there's some kind of a 
glass or plastic barrier that is between uh, themselves and other people to make sure that the virus is not getting, uh, getting to me. Uh, and finally, if there's a way for someone else to do the job that I'm supposed to do. So these are all different types of fears that we've been hearing people talking about lately. And, and in order for us to, to adapt to these kind of fears, governments have actually imposed certain solutions. Solutions such as the ones that you see here, that people have to be distant from each other when they are eating together. And, we've, and definitely, this is not the normal way that people will, will eat after this pandemic is over. So this is definitely not culturally sensitive. At the same time, uh, governments asked us to be two meters away from each other, by the way. So, and, and people will line up and they will keep on having a very long lineup and, you know, standing in the sun outside. So this is definitely not practical. And we cannot continue to do this after the pandemic is over. In addition, leaving a seat between one passenger, another passenger is simply not economical for the, for the companies, okay? So these solutions that have been imposed on us right now because of the time of crisis, cannot, we cannot continue to be applying these kind of solutions. So we must come up with some more innovative solutions. Innovation in, in, in solutions that can actually be sustainable and continue, can continue to be active and acceptable and practical after the pandemic is over. What we have done actually at the Global Innovation Management Institute is that we had this think tank and we came up actually with 12 different principles that we believe that every business needs to know about in order for them to revive the products, services, and even the business models that they want to introduce to the market, okay? And these 12 principles, okay, when they are being conducted uh, well, and safely, they will definitely help decrease the fear between people. They will definitely increase the trust between people. They will allow companies to have a competitive advantage over other companies and will be able to actually survive and be able to grow in a proper way. And it will allow companies actually to develop new business models so that they can, so that they are able to grow. So there's an economical, but also social value that comes from applying these innovation principles. What I wanna do is that I wanna walk you through six of those principles, okay? Just for you to get a, a, an understanding of what, of what they do. The first principle is based on the concept of the, what we call decentralized operations, right? Is that every single business needs to think about itself that I'm doing my business in a certain physical location. Can I, instead of having this centralized uh, uh, work that I'm doing, can I take part of this work and place it outside or elsewhere? Can I decentralize and decouple the location of doing business? We see this happening in restaurants where you can pre-order groceries online and then you can park somewhere and get your, and get your uh, goods without actually going inside the supermarket. We see that actually in hospitals, that instead of going inside the hospital, you can actually get the health service that you need from out from, from a kiosk or a cabin outside, outside of this hospital. We see that even in gyms, that instead of, instead of gyms going bankrupt because people are not able to go there, gyms actually give you now the chance to rent their equipment at your home and therefore to move the operations from the typical gym, centralized gym, to a decentralized option across homes. And finally, of course, we have the option of working from home. So this is a very powerful concept of decentralization of your operation. And every company can actually consider that because that can give you, give customers much more, a lot of flexibility in terms of how they uh, receive your service. The second one, and I'm sure that you've seen this Philip Dan Kitir Giddam, okay? Which is called do it yourself. Halas. So we have, for example, a pizza place in Egypt, right? That we used to go to. And because we're not able to go to this pizza place anymore, what they did is that they created a kit. A kit where you actually, inside, you can find the dough, you can find the mozzarella cheese, you can find the sauces, you can find the toppings, and you would do the pizza yourself. This concept is very powerful because the concept of do-it-yourself does not, allow, does not uh, allow you, or does not, you don't need to interact with other people. So for example, you can check in uh, hotels on your own, right? And you don't need to go through the whole checking 
uh, process inside hotels, and this is also happening also in different airports. You can actually provide different coaching sessions for doing haircuts at home, for doing yoga at home. So a lot of things is doing, so the concept of do it yourself is an interesting concept. It used to be very confined IKEA. So IKEA is based on a do it yourself, right? So you get the box and then you so let's do it yourself. Now other companies are looking at this principle and seeing how can they become more innovative in terms of the products and services that they can introduce. We also see another very important principle called protected. And protected means that you put some kind of a barrier to stop the virus from getting to you. So we saw, we saw different types of protected barriers like in taxis so that you can have a safe ride and it, it creates some kind of a barrier between you and the driver. We've seen that, I'm sure you've seen that in Lebanon where you, where you see uh, uh, a certain uh, uh, glass uh, uh, or certain kind of plastic that is inserted in supermarkets, in pharmacies, so that if anybody uh, sneezes, it's called a sneeze cart, the virus cannot be transmitted. So it protects the cashier from the customer and, pr and protects the customer from the cashier. Again, aeroplanes are looking into different ways to, you know, to get this kind of protected measures in their aeroplanes. And finally, a company by the name of Pantelion is now creating what we call a social distancing wearable device, which give, gives you kind of an alarm when someone approaches you uh, too, 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 too strongly, so especially in crowded places. So these are all types of different solutions that, that, uh, uh, that are existent uh, based on the principle of the protected uh, principle. The second other principle is called time segmentation. Okay, this is also a principle that a lot of companies can actually think about doing it in different ways. So time segmentation means that instead of your clients or your customers, they are all consuming your service or product at the same time. Why can't you redistribute those uh, customers over time so that you do not create any kind of congestion areas. We've seen this, we've seen that a lot with uh, uh, morning uh, hours specifically dedicated for elderly, okay? That, no, that from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. in Carrefour, nobody can enter Carrefour except the elderly people, okay? That's called, this is time segmentation. We saw that also at restaurants and in banks that you can res start reserving a certain time slot where you can go to these places. Again, this is time segmentation. You cannot just go there on your, on your own. And we definitely, we've seen that a lot with, with, uh, with work. That in factories, instead of bringing all the people in the morning, they basically have half of the people in the morning coming half of the people coming at night. So that's again, the concept of time segmentation. So it's something for businesses to consider with their clients, how they can do this type of time segmentation to give people you know, the trust and to reduce their fear uh, when they actually uh, go to your, uh, your working place. The other very powerful concept, which is uh, the principle of touchless. Right, so you can see very well that when you're talking about when you enter an elevator, we've I'm sure that you've seen a lot of these uh videos that talk about you know that instead of me pushing the buttons inside the elevator to pick the kind of floor that I want to go to, instead of actually pushing, there are actually now uh technologies based on hel hel helography, which is some kind of a holographic contactless touch for elevators, so you can actually touch the uh, numbers uh, in air because of the holographic projection that is created. Same thing also for shopping. There's, there's the AI, artificial intelligence enabled self checkouts, okay, that, that exists and therefore reduces the, the touching part. Also, there for, for uh, even for opening the knobs of uh, doors, instead of you touching the knobs of the doors, there's actually now a, a device that is, that is basically used to help you push uh, the knob and not get uh, any kind of virus that might be on, the, on these kind of services. So that's another very important principle to, to, be, to be thinking about. Of course, virtual and digital is something that I'm sure all of us have been seeing over the past uh, three months, but this now can be extended throughout different sectors, 
right? So when you're, instead of going to the bank and talking with a professional, now you can have some of these online uh, sessions uh, to ask any questions that you want. When you're talking about for healthcare, it's exactly the same thing. Actually, there's an application now that differentiates between a regular cough and a cough that is because of COVID-19. So again, this helps you that instead of you going to a clinic or a hospital, these type of applications, digital applications can help you identify whether you have uh, uh, symptoms of COVID-19 or not. And we've seen a lot of virtual concerts, a lot of virtual uh, uh, museum tours, even graduations of people in universities have been done uh, virtual. And finally, instead of having paper uh, menus, okay, and people going to the restaurant and basically touching the same menu with, menu with the same with the same hands, with different hands, you can actually have create a digital uh, menu card and a good way to pay. So again, this is the concept of virtual and digital uh, uh, that is a very important principle that we're looking at. And of course, we have the principle of disposable, that instead of having uh, a certain item that is being used once and twice and three times with people touching it in different ways. Now you can actually look at different disposable models, whether it is uh, uh, for menus uh, that are in, uh, in paper, whether it's in plastic bags, whether it's in bed sheets, you know, you do it, you use it once and then you, and then you, dispo and then you dispose of it. Okay. So these are all, these are all different principles that, that companies, uh, startups, uh, SMEs, businesses need to think about when they are trying to find solutions for uh, the kind of products or services that they are introducing during the uh, pandemic. Now, how exactly, how exactly am I going to be able to do that? This is the methodology that we've actually uh, followed. Basically, what we do is that we break down the uh, uh, value chain this is the value chain of a particular company into three very simple parts. We have the own company, which is inside. We have the suppliers and we have the customers, right? And each one of the, along this value chain, I start to check which parts are going to be having a high risk related to COVID-19. But both the value chain and identify where the COVID-19 exists. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you are talking about the restaurant, okay? So the restaurant, inside the restaurant, who works inside the restaurant? We have the chef, we have the waiter, and we have someone who cleans up. Who are the customers? The customers could be someone, Maya, who would be, can be sitting inside the, the restaurant eating in, or Penny, who is picking up something from the restaurant, or Ziad, who is basically uh, receiving some kind of delivery to his home. These are the different uh, personas of customers that you would have. And these are the different personas of people who are working inside the, inside the restaurant. And from the supplier side, we have Salah, who is, who is preparing the meat. We have Fathi, who, who, who has to do with the maintenance. And we have Sana, who's working with the laundry, who prepares the laundry. So these are all the suppliers. What we basically do is that we take each and every one of these different personas, right? And we try to envision the kind of journey this uh, person is going to have. So for example, Maya, who is going to be eating inside the restaurant, her journey is going to be the following. Maya will enter the restaurant. She will be seated by the waiter. Maya is going to be ordering food from the waiter. And then food is going to be prepared. And then Maya is going to be served. And then Maya is going to eat. And then Maya is going to pay. And then Maya leaves at the end. This is the journey of Maya inside the restaurant. Now, what we basically do is that we basically, for each one of these steps, we rate it on a high, medium, and low as how much is this COVID, is it COVID-19 risky, okay? So the ones that is read, the, the parts of the journey that is read is going to be very high risk, and then we have the yellow, medium risk, and then the green risk, uh, green risk okay, the low risk. And what we basically do is that the stages that have the red and the orange, the red or the yellow, right? We actually look into this particular stage and we apply the, the principles that we talked about, the innovation principles we talked about, and see how can we make the seating of Maya more safe or more trusted? 
by applying principles such as touchless, principles such as do it yourself, principles such as digital and virtual and so forth. And we do that throughout the whole stages of the journey. So what you end up, what you end up doing, okay, is that, is that when you apply these principles that I talked to you about, you are not going to come up with solutions that don't make any sense, that are not culturally sensitive or pragmatic or practical or, or even economical. Okay, they're not economical. We want to come up with something that is culturally sensitive, practical, and economical. And that's why when we apply principles such as, again, protected during the seating stage, paperless when Maya is making her orders, certified clean when you are preparing your food and we explain how this is done. The, the, the serving itself it could be do it yourself. Maybe you can go and you can serve yourself instead of someone serving you to increase your trust. Okay, disposable at the time of eating, touchless at the time of paying, and do it yourself at the time of packing the rest of your food and leaving the restaurant. Okay, so each one of these stages, you apply the principles and you come up with a lot of different solutions out of something like this. So you, when you apply this, imagine that you apply this only for Maya. You could do this for all the different personas who are customers to you, who are employers to you, and who are suppliers to you. What you will end up with is hundreds and hundreds of different solutions that you as a business, you can actually uh, work on and actually uh, do extremely well. Okay, so that's, that's it from my side. I'm gonna stop here, okay? And again, I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions at the end of the, uh, the seminar. Thank you so much, uh, Mohab, for your valuable uh, input and for sharing those principles who are very highly needed now, uh, nowadays. Now we'll move to our uh, second speaker, uh, Patrick Atme. Uh, as said previously, uh, Mr. Patrick is a UNDP consultant assisting the Economic and Social Fund for Development, ESFD in providing financial and non-financial services to SMEs. For the past eight years, Patrick has been delivering financial advisory to small entrepreneurs, helping them applying for loan with commercial banks. After a successful career assessing risk and structuring credit facilities, Patrick now helps SMEs write business plans, feasibility studies to apply for loans. So Mr. Patrick, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jehan, very much. And thank you, Mohab, actually, for this very insightful and interesting presentation. Can, can you hear me well? Yes, very good. OK, perfect. So I'm going to share the, the screen first. OK. Very good. So after hearing this uh, very interesting presentation, actually, uh, well, some of the ideas presented needs money. And this is where I step in to talk about funding opportunities. Uh, so thank you for having me first. Uh, I'm really glad to be part of this uh, mini webinar series. And thank you everyone for joining. I can see a lot of participants here. So uh, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, so. Uh, I'm Patrick, I'm a consultant in international development, and uh, I currently, I'm currently assisting the Economic and Social Fund for Development as an operation manager. So uh, first I'm gonna uh, introduce you to the uh, ESFD. We're gonna call it ESFD because Economic and Social Fund for Development is very long. And then we're gonna talk about the services provided and who and how uh, you can benefit from these services. So to start with, uh, who is the Economic and Social Fund for Development? The ESFD is a governmental body dedicated to poverty alleviation in Lebanon through the creation of uh, job opportunities and the improvement of living conditions in disadvantaged areas. So we reach out to the poor through systematic and sustainable partnerships with uh, different uh, and competent intermediaries, such as banks, uh, municipalities, NGOs, etc. So today, we uh, the ESFD operate through uh, two main components. 
the community development component. I'm not gonna dwell a lot on this and the job creation component. Uh, just like a small brief on the community development, the community development actually aims at improving the living conditions uh, through uh, providing technical and financial assistance uh, to, uh, for the implementation of priority projects in uh, rural remote areas. Uh, so uh, this uh, component works mainly uh, with uh, municipalities and local authorities in order to implement uh, local economic uh, projects. Now, uh, the second component, which, which is at the center of our, uh, our uh, presentation, is the job creation. The job creation component uh, aims at, of course, creating jobs and ensuring uh, financial inclusion. Uh, through the provision of financial and non-financial services. So what do we offer? What the ESFD offer? The ESFD today uh, aims at uh, first help people who have uh, difficulties accessing finance uh, to first link them to financial institutions and then accompany them in order to be able to meet the requirement of the banks. So uh, what we offer today is uh, a loans, uh, a set of loans actually, provided to improve access to finance for uh, productive and sustainable activities. Uh, these loans can go up to 75 million uh, Lebanese lira. Uh, uh, we're talking uh, long-term loans, uh, which means loans up to five years with uh, a grace period that can go up to one year. Uh, these loans, of course, are subsidized loans with a very low interest rate uh, and are provided through uh, partner banks. Uh, so the SFD is not a financial institution. And, and as I mentioned before, the SFD reaches out to uh, its beneficiaries through, uh, uh, through a partnership. So in this case, our partners are the banks. The loans are uh, provided through uh, uh, six banks, uh, six partner banks. Uh, so this is a part of the services provided. Uh, the other uh, part of the service is the business advisory services. So as we know, uh, a lot of people, they want to approach a bank, but they don't know how to approach it. This is one, or they don't have uh, the requirement. They don't know how to fill the requirement to approach a bank. So the purpose of the, of the business advisory services is to help these people accompany them from uh, the day they decide to take a loan until the day they, got, they get their loans. What we do here actually, we support applicants in completing a comprehensive loan application. This is one. And we assist in following up uh, on the loan application until the applicant gets his loan. So these services goes, uh, go hand in hand. Uh, the uh, applicant that is interested in applying for a loan will automatically uh, benefit from the business advisory services. Okay, now uh, who are our targeted beneficiaries? Uh, we focus a lot on uh, rural remote uh, areas. So this is our purpose, after all, is to facilitate access to finance. And we know that access to finance is very uh, is easier like in urban areas, but it's much more hard in uh, rural areas. So we focus on uh, Lebanese SME owners in Syrian refugee hosting communities. This is uh, one. Uh, we uh, finance all type of projects. So basically, uh, if you have an existing project, or if you have a new project, uh, then we cover both. Uh, of course, the aim of, the, uh, of this component is to create job. Therefore, our uh, focus is all, always on uh, projects with a high job creation potential. And uh, finally, uh, we encourage women entrepreneurship. Therefore, uh, <coughs> we always uh, provide uh, our services uh, to uh, women entrepreneurs. 
what are the targeted regions? Now, uh, the, SF, the ESFT usually works all over the Lebanese territories, but nowadays due to the recent event, we're uh, concentrating our efforts actually uh, on uh, specific areas. Uh, we're currently running uh, a program that is financed by the government of the Netherlands. And uh, the, uh, the objective of this program is to create job opportunities in uh, host communities. Therefore, as you can see, uh, the targeted regions are mainly focused in uh, the Beka and in the North. So basically, uh, we work with this program uh, covers uh, the Beka area, the whole Beka area, and it covers Akkar and Minyodoni area. So anyone who had a project there, you don't have to be from Akkar, but your project should be in Akkar. And you don't have to be from Malbec, but your project should be in Malbec. As long as your project is uh, located in this area, then you're eligible to apply for uh, the ESFT loan. So as you can see, uh, these, area, uh, these areas are highlighted with the with a red arrow. So uh, ESFT has been running uh, this program since uh, 2002. So uh, we've been there uh, since a long period. Uh, of course, as I told you before, this program used to cover the whole Lebanese territories and hopefully soon we'll be able to cover again the whole Lebanese territories. But nowadays, the program that is still running is the program that covers uh, the areas uh, I've talked about. So the SFT throughout the years, I mean from 2003 till April 2020, has been able to serve more than 10,000 projects all over the Lebanese territories. Uh, has dispersed around uh, 200 billion uh, Lebanese lira uh, for project financing. And of course, since the aim of the project is to create jobs, we've been able through, uh, throughout these uh, 10,000 projects to create uh, more than 8,000 uh, job opportunities in the areas we work, uh, we work in. And uh, around 4,000 individuals who benefited from uh, the loans benefited also from the business advisory services. So uh, we've been able to serve actually uh, 4,000 enterprises with uh, business advisory services, and we've been able to uh, provide financing to more than 10,000 uh, <coughs> beneficiaries. As you can see from the picture, actually, most of our projects are uh, like a project of a small size. Uh, as, I, as I actually uh, mentioned in my introduction, our purpose is to facilitate access to finance. And these are the people that are really in need uh, for these type of services. So as you can see, you have, uh, you have like a clothing store, you have a barber shop, uh, uh, you have a, a Mooney store, uh, and you have a, a forum. So these are the type of uh, person that we, uh, that we serve throughout our uh, project. Uh, our project cover, as I told you, uh, we, covers, uh, we used to cover the whole Lebanese territories. And as you can see, uh, we are all over like Lebanon. Uh, as you can see, it, I mean, the dots uh, shows the, the, the beneficiary, the, the geographic location of the beneficiaries. So as you can see, we are we were everywhere. I mean, covering uh, the whole Lebanese territories with our services. Uh, and if we want to talk about uh, sec sectorial distribution, then uh, of course the services uh, sector uh, was uh, on top of the beneficiaries with 39% of our loan followed by trade. And this mirrors actually the structure of our economy because our economy is a service economy. So this is why like uh, the main uh, category that benefited from this loan is the service category. So at the end, before I finish, actually I know that many among of you are not uh, of a small size, but uh, I uh, would really appreciate if you can spread the news 
because uh, the, this program is uh, one of the only programs, I guess, available today that provide financial services to uh, small enterprises in these specific areas. So if you deal with suppliers living in these areas, if you deal with clients living with these areas, please spread the news, tell them about this program and let, let them reach out to them so we can help them. Thank you very much for, uh, for your time. Uh, and uh, I'll be here anyway to take your question later on. Uh, thank you, Jihan. That's it. So thank you so much, Patrick, for sharing uh, those programs with us. We will make sure to spread the word about uh, this important uh, access for finance. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now we will move to our uh, last uh, speaker, Mrs. Zena Dakash, who is uh, uh, the person who founded in 2007 Catharsis, the Lebanese Center for Drama Therapy, and she bought the innovative tools of drama therapy to Lebanon. In 2009, she produced the theater production, 12 Angry Lebanese, with inmates of Rumi prison that received international acclaim and led to the implementation of Law 463. In 2011, she created the play Shahrazad in Baabda with women inmates of Baabda prison. She also produced and directed theater plays that lobbied also for policy change with migrant domestic workers, Shabbaik and In 2016, she directed the play Johar Up in the Air, interpreted, interpreted by the Rumi inmates. And this project led to two draft laws prepared by Catharsis and submitted to the Lebanese parliament. Moreover, Zena offers individual therapy at her private uh, practice clinic, and she works with corporations who wish to increase the productivity of their staff and enhance their interpersonal and communication skills. She is a recipient of many awards given for her distinguished contributions to the field of social initiatives and services. Zena, Khabartine and Halla Hatihdina through a journey of heroes, the hero journeys. Yani, we can't wait to listen to you more. You're on mute. Is that what you think? It's a mute. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Is there anyone who has a message? I don't want to ask you a question. Okay, <laughs> رح اقوله وموجه لاي شخص عم يمرق بهالمرحله اللي كثير صعبه بالعالم سو so مش بس موجه لحدا هو عنده ستارت اب او عم ببلش شركه جديده او هيك وموجه فعلا لالي لاليك لامي للعالم اللي عم نشوفها على الطريق لكل حدا مارق باسئله حوالها شو عم بيصير معهم هلا كان بشغلهم كان بعلاقاتهم كان بعائلته وشو رح يصير فينا بالمستقبل ف بالعلاج بالدراما اللي هو تخصصي يعني اللي هو الدراما ثيرابي في تكنيك ما عم بوقف استخدمها من وقت مارش 2020 بالبلد سو so طبعا عم نعمل كثير اونلاين سيشنز كان انديفيدجوال او جروب سيشنز ما عم نتلاقى مع العالم بس شغالين هيك اند ذا بيست تكنيك يلي عم تزبط وهي اللي بحب شاركها معكم اليوم شيء اسمه ذا هيروز جيرني يعني مشوار البطل اللي دخلنا فا ديفنتلي فيكم تقروا اكثر هلا رح اعطي بعض الاسامي اذا بتحبوا تقروهم يعني مين طلعوا بهالتقنيه بس اتس وندرفل لانه هالتقنيه بتيجي بتقلنا بمراحل صعبه ما عم نقدر ناخذ فيها قرارات او عن جد وي دونت هاف ذا كنترول اوفر ثينجز لا حدا منا عارف اصلا البلد شو حيصير فيه ولا عارفين اي متى الكوفيد حتخلص، يوم ما تلكت عندي بيدياتر تبع بنتي قالت لي بعد في سنتين هيك قلت لها ليه ما حيتلاقى الفاكسين؟ قالت لي لا لا الدراسات رح تاخذ سنتين، رح نقعد سنتين 
على هالزوم حنقعد سنتين مع سوشيال ديستانسينج سنتين شركاتنا يمكن بعد تدهور اكثر او ان شاء الله لا ان شاء الله يكون اقل سو so, نرجع للهيروز جيرني ذا هيروز جيرني بيطرح علينا تقنيه كثير سهله بيسال كل واحد منا يكتب اربع شخصيات اربعه بحياته شخصيه من الطفوله ذات وي ادمايرد يعني عيوننا بضوه بس نفكر فيها هالشخصيه فيها تكون حدا نحن تعرفنا عليه بحياتنا من العائله تاتا جده ماما بابا خالته حدا وي ادمايرد حدا بس نفكر فيه هيك في ريليف بننبسط عيوننا بضوه نكتب هالشخصيه ونكتب لها ثلاث صفات حدا ادلت هيرو بنسميه لكن واحد من تشايلد هود هلا واحد من الادلت هود تبعنا ما بعرف استاذ بالجامعه بارتنر حدا ظهرت معه زوج ما بعرف صديق تعرفت عليه بمطرح كنت بكونفرنس وتلاقيت بهالزلمه بس مش حدا مشهور هالشخصيه بده يكون حدا انه تعرفنا عليه كمان نكتب له ثري كواليتيز ثاني شخصية هي حدا فيمس حدا أكثر من مليونين زلمة بيعرفوا على وجه الأرض بيكون ما بعرف نيلسون مانديلا ممثل شهير ممثلة ما بعرف المسيح النبي محمد معروفين مشهورين وليه كمان بينالوا إعجابنا ونكتب هالثلاث صفات لهالشخصية الثالثة أما رابع شخصية هي حيوان بس نفكر فيه كمان هيك قلبنا بيكبر عيوننا بيضو ما بعرف يمكن نقول سبحان الله عن جد كيف هيك حيوان على وجه الأرض فيكون حشرة فيكون حيوان كبير وكمان بنكتب له ثلاثة كواليتيز سو هو تمرين تعملوا لوحدكم كان بد يكون حطيتهم على باوربوينت هيك بس بركي جيهم فيه ارجع ابعت لك اياهم يعني اتليست اللي حكيتهم هلا إذا العالم بدها تعمل اكزرسيس على حالها سو so, التكنيك بتقول انه حننتهي عندنا 12 صفة مكتوبين على هالورقة والدراسات اثبتت انه 12 صفة اللي حطيناهم هن 12 صفة نحن بنمتلكهم مش الشخص اللي فكرنا فيه مش تشايلد هود هيرو مش نيلسون مانديلا اللي كتبته مش شو بعرفني البابيون اللي حطيت له اياهم لهالصفات هول 12 صفة انا بمتلكهم بعرف صعب وبصير لا كيف انا كتبت انا قوي منن للقوي هلا من نار بهيدي الفتره مجرد ما قدرت اعمل هالبروجكشن على شيء يعني انا قادر شوفها بغيري بس انا ماني قادر شوفها بحالي طب يساعدنا التمرين يعني جوزيف كامبل اللي كتب هالتمرين وهيك بيقول انه اوكي اذا بعد منك مصدق انه انت اللي عندك اياهم ال 12 صفه اليوم مع كل التساؤلات اللي عندك او عندك اياهم حط تحويلك هالاربع شخصيات بحكي شو ما كان انا عم سوق السياره وعن جد كل وقت عم بفكر يا الله شو بدي اعمل بشركتي يا الله بتركوا موظفين يا رب بشيلهم او بحطهم شو بيصير بخفف معيشات ام سينج وات ايفر مثلا بقول تخيل انه قاعد حدك بالسياره حيوانك اللي كتبته اللي ذات يو ادماير حطيهم قاعد حدك حطيت له السنتر ورا نيلسون مانديلا قاعد على اليمين وبالصندوق حط التشايلد هيرو بالعشمال ما وفتح معهم حديث حديث طبعا هو وهمي هو فيرتشوال عم بيصير اند بيليف بهالقدرات اللي هن منهم الا قدراتك اللي منا قدراتهم وشوف شو عندهم اجوبه لك يعني ما بعرف نرجع للاكزامبل سو انا يمكن عم بقول يا الله هلا شو بعمل بصرف الموظفين او بنزل لهم 50% يدلي شو بعرف او لك من لوجيك البابيون اللي انا كتبت حر آه ما بيلتزم يمكن بمطرح معين آه ما عنده كيلبابيليتي تجاه اي شيء يمكن عنده شيء اللي يمكن اسمعه نيلسون مانديلا يمكن شو كان حيقول لي ما بعرف بفتره ورح تمرق واكيد رح يكون فيها هيك بس انت منك مزني باي شيء اذا رح يصير اي دونت نو كل منا كل شخصيه ولا اجوبه وهذا منه تمرين بنعمله مره هذا بنعمله 24 ساعه 24 تحت الدوش بالسياره آه مش ضروري قدام العالم اللي بيعتبروني يمكن جنينه فاتحين احاديث نحن وهال بنسميهم لي زامي فيرتشوال تبعنا بس اتس بروفن ذات اف وي اوبن ذس كونفرسيشن اذا بنفتح على الحديث نحن وياهم مينيموم على فتره اسبوع ونكتب شو الاجوبه ورح ننصدم في اجوبه نحن ما كنا بحياتنا حتخيل انه عن جد ايه مزبوط ايه هيدي لا لا ايه ممكن اعمل هيك نكتبهم باحرف كبيره نقراهم الصبح بالليل نترك حدنا نوت بوك شو عندهم ه 12 صفه او هالاربع شخصيات يقولوا لي 
ذا انسر ويل بي ذير لانه ذا انسر از ويزن اس يعني اليوم مع كل الصعوبات اللي عم نمرق فيها نحن كثيرابيست اكيد عم نرجع كثير عالم عندها صعوبات وكيف بالنهايه الثيرابيست وبس مسهل هي الاجوبه ار ويزن اس ويزن يو ويزن كل واحد عنده يوم بس بده مسهل يسمعهم ف صراحة بتخيل أحسن تكنيك للريزيلينس بهي الفترة This is what I recommend best هيدا تمرين كل واحد في يعمله لحاله Definitely if you need guidance you'd go لحدا يمشي معك وكاونسلر أه يكون سبورت معك بهالفترة أو معي تكمل بعد آخر شغلة عنا اللي هي التكنولوجيا So once أنا كتبتها 12 صفة وبلشت أتمرس عليهم وهيك رح ننصدم إنه في صوت تاني كتير قوي بيطلع هيدا بنسميه الكاونتر هيرو أو الديمون أه مثل اي فيلم سينما بيبقى في الايرو تبعنا بلش يكبر هيدا الواجب انه هيك لازم اعمل هيك الافضل انا عارف حالي قوي انا بقدر امرق هالفتره انا هيك في صوت بلش يطلع لا انت ما فيك تعمل شيء لا كل عقلك مالك شو صاير مالك الخوف ما نخاف من هيدا الصوت ما نخاف هيدا صوت تعودنا عليه منذ اكثر ما بعرف قد ايه اعماركم 30 25 سنه 40 50 سنه هيدا الصوت يوف بن ذير يوف دان ذير هيدا الصوت هو اليوم عم نعطيه الفرصه سو so هيدا يمكن سمعنا له كثير ما بنعرف لوين بيودي بس هيدا بعد ما عن جد نميته او يمكن ان شاء الله تكونوا انتم منمينه قبل بس ممكن فعلا بهالوقت مع مع هالبانديميك وهيك بحاجه انه يقوى حطوا طاقتكم هون وقولوا ما عندي شيء اخسره سو لما يطلع هالصوت مش نقمعه حيل ما قالش لا لا نقبله لا انت ما فيك لا انت ما فيك يمكن عقلك شو هالحكي نقبله انه اوكي اوكي يلا دي او برجع لك بس اعطوه اكثر مكان لكل الاربع شخصيات اللي هن منهم الا انتم مع الوقت بصير بطل نسميه نالسن مانديلا اللي مش نقول هيدا انا اللي عم بقول هيك لحالي اوكي سو so, بيتجذروا ال 12 صفه والصفات الثانيه اللي بنسميهم الديمون اللي بيجوا دائما بينزلوا منه بيصير الصوت يصغر، ليه؟ لأنه بطلنا عم نغذي له هيدا الصوت، ما خوفنا إذا بضلنا نطعميهم ونقول لهم أوكي رح أسمع لكم هيك، ما بيكبروا المخاوف. إذا أنا عم غذي هيدا البارتي اللي هي الهيرو وعم نميها وعم بحاول أسمع لها أكثر، ولو بأي شيء بأشياء أيام صغيرة من البونجور بنقولها للعالم، من الابتسامة، من من قرار يمكن صغير، نبلش بالقرارات الصغيرة اللي فيها أعملها. دان هيدا الصوت الثاني اللي هو دايما ما راح يتغذى بقى وياخد هو البوفوار او الباور علي بهيدا الفتره. أه ما بدي اطول كثير صراحه يمكن ما عملت 20 دقيقه بس ريلي بفضل نفوكس على شيء واحد واذا بتحبوا تعرفوا اكثر عن تقنيه اسمها ذا هيروز جيرني ذا هيروز جيرني مشوار البطل رحله البطل وفيكم تقروا كثير لجوزيف كامبل فيكم تقروا لبول روبيو هن الاثنين يعني اللي بلشها هو جوزيف كامبل وبول روبيو رجع تطور كل التمارين ممكن تنعمل فرديا او مع كونسلور يقدر يكمل بتمنى انه ما تقولوا ايه اوكي سهل هيك ترايت وعن جد شوفوا ذاتس ات جينون عن جد ما بدي ازيد اكثر زينا يعني ميرسي كثير على هالنصايح عن جد كثير ما 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 اعطيت شيء ما بدي نتفلسف عم بقول شيء بروفن لانه ما في غير هيدي التكنيك اكيد مع تطورات عم بشتغلها من اول الكابت كل شيء ثاني اتس نوت ذا تايم واكيد يعني حنعمل بعد جلسه معك يمكن لاطول تنروح مور ان دابس بهالتكنيك كلهم سوا هوبفلي ثانك يو سو ماتش سو هلا حارجع اشوف سلايدو كان في عنا أسئلة على سلايدو حنجرب ناخذهم معنا. I will try to share my screen. عم فيكم تشوفوا السكرين تبعي؟ اه. اوكي. So the first question. Question for Mohab. Are we getting the PowerPoint from Dr. Mohab? I can reply. Uh, also, the, the, the registered webinar will be shared with you on YouTube. And Dr. Mohab, will you be able to share the, the slides also? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to have a, a discussion with you about this, Jihan. Okay. However, the, definitely, I think the information uh, 
you will you will it's it's all there in the in the YouTube or the the the, the video that you're going to be uploading. So I just need to check a few uh, a few things related to the copyright, okay? Because it's not only my own, and I will get back to you on this, uh, Jan. Okay. Okay, لا أنا عليها طلب كتير. Uh, but Anna, I can uh, assure that the, the presentation will be shared on, uh, on YouTube, the, the, whole, uh, the whole webinar. So, uh, Hilbert said, thank you for sharing these trends and insights. Uh, thank you for this amazing information, Dr. Mohab. So also, can we have the PowerPoint? Uh, a question from Nadine Khouri to Patrick. Uh, hi, Patrick. Since we are working to become a productive economy, can small farmers benefit from the grant? Uh, sorry, but I don't see the question, Jihan. But the other thing to benefit from a grant? From this grant. Grant, okay. I don't know if the information was not clear. It's a loan, it's not a grant. Uh, definitely, uh, farmers are a uh, big category of beneficiaries. So definitely, uh, all the sectors, including agriculture. Now, uh, there is a possibility to get a grant. We are going to get with the different countries. We are going to get a partnership with a partnership and a partnership so that we can get these people with the different countries to get So definitely, farming is on the list. Is on, is on the list, on the top of the list. Perfect. So once you have information, you can share it with us. Once finalized, we will pitch you. Okay. Uh, someone uh, had an issue with the, with, the, with the voice. It was echoing. We are sorry for this. Uh, also, Nadine, uh, for a question to Patrick. Is the project still operating under the current Lebanese bank situation? Yes, we are working with one bank, which is the Bank of BLC, and operations are running normally. We don't have any problems with this. So anyway, if you want to talk to us, I want to talk to you on the last slide, which you can share with us. I put a website on the ESFT, there are a lot of details on the phone, and they can get to us, and they can get to us. And I'm sure they can get to us from the details on the phone, and they can get to us from the phone. يعرفوها كرمال يقدموا على هيدا الكارت. عظيم، ثانك يو. A question to Zena. What is the minimum age you start this therapy? الدراما ثيرابي موجهة لكل الأعمار أكيد، بس التكنيك اللي هلا حكيت عنها ذا هيروز جيرني ديفنتلي بدها ماتيورتي، بدها يعني ممنوع تكون فعلا عم تتطبق تحت ال 20 ans, 18 ans. يعني oh. تحت 18 تسعة عشرين لا لا ينصح بالهيروز. Okay. So this is all كل شيء questions عنا يهون. Anyone would like to to add something? You can uh, raise your hands. We can open the floor if we, you can if you want to talk or interact with us. اوكي جيهان تب انا كمان رح احكي بعد يلا كمان بدي اشكركم مره كلكم وباتريك سوري اي مانت لونز كتبت جرانت باي بس اي مانت لونز وانا بحس انه هلا بهالوقت بهالايكونوميك كرايسيس اللي عم نقطع فيها الفارمرز كثير بحاجه لهيدا اللون وخاصه هن الفارمرز تبع عكار الفارمرز الصغار So, if you know at the top, I understood from you that the amount of money for 75 million, you can reach 75 million, but for example, how many farmers can you send to you? Nadine, there are a lot of books that I want to remember. We have funds available, and the program is not enough, and there is no limit. I want to send you a book, on the basis of the rules, which is if you want to send the rules, the rules, the place, the location. مفروض بس يكونوا او بمطر... ايه عكار عكار ايه عكار هني مين اللي عكار فيك تبعتي قد ما بدك هلا اوكي وابريل مينيموم انترست قد ايه الانترست ريت هو هو الانترست هلا هو 7.65 أه 
uh, decreasing, declining uh, rate. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. So thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, as promised, I will share with you the, the, the YouTube uh, link to, uh, uh, for your reference. And uh, we will send you updates about our upcoming activities. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jihan. Thank you, dear speakers. Thank you, Jihan. For your, for your insights and information. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye Patrick. Bye Patrick. Bye bye. Yeah, no, have a charafna. Charafna. Bye Zina.